Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about a brand new Synology NAS. Come on, you saw this coming, you saw the title and the start of this video, you knew what this was about. This is the brand new Synology DS1621 Plus. It's a brand new 6-bay NAS from them and it serves, I think, as a, uh, a follow-up, I should say, to the DS1618 Plus. Now, six bays are something Synology have only really been entering into for the last two, two and a half years with their very first one, the aforementioned DS1618 Plus, closely followed up by the DS1618 uh, sorry, 3018 XS Plus, uh, an Atom and then a Pentium powered NAS respectively. Six bays are something that have really grown in popularity over the last few years with larger hard drives arriving on the market from companies like Seagate and WD with 16 and now even 18 TB drives currently available. Now, because of that, the utility and the affordability of things like RAID 6 have now become a lot more desirable to business users. RAID 6, or SHR2, is a two-disc failure system that allows your drives to withstand two drives failing. So, RAID 6 is, of course, very, very beneficial having that two-stage safety net. But in order to take advantage of it, you still need a lot of storage. In a four-bay system, you effectively half your overall storage. In an eight-bay system, it's still lovely, but eight bays are quite expensive. And therefore, six-bay slap down the middle is very interesting indeed and quite desirable now in 2020. Of course, this is not the only 6-bay that Synology have entered into this year. The recently released DS1621 XS Plus, uh, a Xeon-powered 6-bay, really did make some ripples in my, in my eyes, at least serving as a great upgrade to a number of their solutions and finding a great middle ground between storage and power, still finding a great price point. But this brings things even further forward with the improved architecture over that of the 1618 Plus that came before it and some new things being thrown into the mix. So let's talk about what we know. Yes, it is a six bay NAS, but let's talk about the you know the biggest change so far, that CPU. They've moved away from the Atom or Deviton based CPU that we've seen before and into AMD Ryzen. This is the AMD Ryzen V1500B. Now, this is a CPU, I'm going to be completely frank with you, I do not have a lot of personal experience with, and I'll be looking into more and more after this video, because uh, it's not the Ryzen that we've talked about in the past. We've talked about Ryzen 3s and uh, 5s and 7s and stuff like that, and those are very, very topping. It would blow this system's price point way beyond what it's supposed to be and where it should live in the portfolio. But it does serve as a very interesting upgrade over that of the CPU that came before it, the C3538, insofar as it has more threads with eight versus four. It has a higher clock speed of 2.2 uh, gigahertz and its quad core processor over the 2.1 gigahertz um, of the Atom that came before it, that C3538. It has uh, better um, handling and instructions inside. Um, a better handling of um, L3 cache. It has uh, improvements in a number of ways. It is not an embedded graphic CPU. That is very, very important to know. But then nor was its predecessor. This family is not designed in that mold. Now, I've got no confirmation if this CPU is going to be pretty much the standard for this kind of tier, this range, The uh, such as if there was a follow-up to the 8-bay, that would be what the DS1821+. plus. And the rack mounts, of course, that come afterwards, there's no conf confirmation that this CPU is going to be utilized in those devices and replace the systems in this family in their follow-ups. But what I would argue is Synology is a company that takes a lot of time to R&D the hell out of the architecture they choose in their systems. Look at the Celerons and the Xeons that they've used and indeed uh, the uh, Denverton CPU that we just mentioned. So it wouldn't surprise me if, they, um, if they're going to jump into utilizing a Ryzen in their systems that they are going to really eke what they can out of it for DSM 6.2 and of course 7 later on. So it wouldn't surprise me if this is a CPU we're going to see used more regularly in the follow-up units in this family. Now, the system also arrives uh, with DDR4 memory, which is great to hear, um, and that's ECC DDR4 memory, uh, DDR4 memory at that. That goes all the way up to 32 gig, which is always good to know that if you are going to be utilizing a system like this in surveillance, in virtual machines uh, and stuff like that, that it has that back end to, to keep things moving forward. It's got the usual AES-NI encryption, 
for that CPU, which is great. It's an Intel, I'm sorry, not an Intel, it's an x86 64 bit processor, so you would expect that. But on top of that, it, it's also got um, that great amount of memory support for and a great floating point to keep things moving forward in a business user environment, which is pretty much where a system like this is going to live. On top of that, it does arrive with six SATA bays, all of which support those 16 and 18 TBs that I've just talked about. And it also has NVMe SSD cache inside as well. Two NVMe bays, which again is becoming pretty much likely a standard for the Plus series from Synology. And with the vast improvements in caching from DSM-7 that we've already seen from their live demonstrations and the private beta that I'm sure a number of you have heard about, we are seeing those improvements firsthand, particularly in, uh, um, in tools like Drive, but also back-end stuff too. Now, there are some familiar aspects here. There are four 1GBE LAN ports there on the rear. So again, link aggregation is on the table, but they are 1GBE, which I know a number of you may uh, groan about there in the background. On top of that, we have three USB 3 ports with one on the front, two on the back, and we have two eSATA ports to bolt on five drives in each one of those eSATA ports with a DX517 connection. You can upgrade this system to 10GBE and that CPU also supports up to two 10 GBE connections moving forward nice and you know lovely and smooth as well and again the PCI lanes on that CPU are improved over that of its predecessor 16 versus 12 but 10 GBE is not available by default on this device you will have to upgrade uh, so long as you do have that two port 10 GBE card the E10 G20 T2 uh, which is not really talked about here on the channel but is floating around all over the place online if you if you search hard enough um, it is a great little follow-up to that of the 16, 18 plus that came before it and with its expandability, uh, the standard features such as those four LAN ports, the RAID 6 uh, component and of course its support of things like BTRFS, that file system we talked about extensively here on the channel and of course Synology Hybrid RAID. I know that's a big, big sticking point for you guys and something we've talked about a lot on the 1621XS Plus videos that we've already had before. Now of course there's still stuff we want to know. We want to know how it's going to handle VMs, how it's going to handle Plex Media Server, how it's going to handle DSM-7, which is stuff we're going to hear about later. We don't have any confirmation of a release date on this, but one would hope it's going to be in the next month or two, but we just don't know right now. On top of that, it has got three years of manufacturer's warranty that can be expanded um, to a, a total of five with the, um, I think it's E... W201, don't quote me on that, that is the warranty extension you can get this up to five years, which I know a number of you business users are into. But how it's going to run DSM, looking at that CPU, looking at the architecture, there's a few things we can certainly confirm. One, it's almost certainly going to handle nearly every single task better than its predecessor, whether it's in terms of the clock speed it's going to be able to utilize or the extent to which it can use them. The second thing we can definitely ascertain at this point is that it will run a lot of the more graphical featured applications despite it's not having an embedded uh, graphics uh, built into that CPU. So we are talking Synology Virtual Machine Manager. We are talking 40 cameras in Surveillance Station. We are talking about the entire collaboration suite of Drive, Chat, Calendar, Mail, Office, uh, an active backup suite and more all for this system now i can't wait to tell you more about it and we are of course going to be comparing this device against its predecessor against uh one above it of course 1621 plus and where it sits with its competitors because this cpu we're starting to see it crop up around the place so it is definitely something that the network attached storage industry is falling in love with in a way that i think they did with that celeron j4125 but it's early days, let's see. If you want to learn more about this device, go to the description where there's links to NAS Compares. We're doing a full breakdown of this device that we know so far with all of the updates as and when they happen in that article. And of course, visit the guys at span.com to learn more about this NAS and how much it's going to cost and where you're going to buy it. My, my mind, I'm hoping it's going to be comparable to that of its predecessor. But otherwise, click like. If you've enjoyed the video, click subscribe to learn more. And I will see you next time.